Hello and welcome. Today's uh, uh, lecture is on Parseval's identity, which is the uh, elementary Fourier series. So I'm going to try to give an exam a few examples on uh, subsequent videos of how to use it. But for today, it's just a proof. So first of all, we need to uh, revisit uh, uh, the, the formula for the Fourier series, which says basically if um, f of x is piecewise continuous, piecewise continuous maybe i shouldn't really be writing all of that because uh, um then i won't have space for the proof and that there'll be a lot of rubbing off so let me just uh, very very quickly uh just write the, the write a little bit more condensed in all of this so if we have uh, a function f of x which is continuous on some interval and is defined on an interval let's say uh, minus L to L. It doesn't have to be minus L to L. It could be uh, alpha to beta and then <coughs> alpha, the, the, this quantity here, is basically beta minus alpha divided by 2 will signify the, the L. So that's known as the half period basically, okay? So, but normally we take symmetrical intervals because they're easier to, to do the integrations. So uh, look at the previous lectures, if, you, if, if they might be helpful on Fourier series. So, so if we have an f of x which is defined on this interval from minus L to L, then our f of x can be written as a naught over two. And of course that will define all these uh, quantities. The sum from n is equal to one to infinity. And we've got, <coughs> a n cos n pi x over l plus b n some infinite series in sines and cosines and um, usually if it's uh, uh, odd or even there'll be either one or the other but and not both and where a ends now is the integral one over l minus l to l f of x very confusing the first time you do it, but actually Fourier series are not hard in general and uh, this is of course the bn so these are these quantities here uh, the ans run of course i have no space here so please don't uh, uh, um, have a go at me because i'm not being super pedantic here as i just explained the problem will be just trying to put everything I need to put on on a board. So basically, the a ends, <coughs> the the end runs from zero. So there's an a zero, a one, a two, a three, and so on. While the b ends, there is no b zero. There's only it starts from n is equal to one, and so on. Okay. So this is now the <coughs> the, the Fourier <coughs> series of a function. On a particular interval and we now try to to prove possible's identity so in order to prove possible's identity um, i haven't actually written it down but uh, we'll, we'll come to it and i'll put in a nice uh, uh, colorful border at the very end we take the definition of f of x as a fourier series we multiply it first of all by f of x so I'm going to write it like this. So that's the left-hand side that I'm doing in there. And I'm going to integrate 1 over L minus L to L, both sides of this particular equation. So if you see what I'm doing in there, I've done this bit here. So I'm going to take 1 over L and integral minus L to <coughs> L and take f of x a naught over 2 I forgot that the dx there integrate with respect to x dx plus again I'm going to take 1 over l take this function here sorry this summand multiplied by f of x and just check that it does agree with what I claimed I was going to do so we'll check it as well 
myself because oops I forgot there the the sum so we got it's nice easy to make mistakes on this kind of thing this is not actually hard it's a very easy proof it's just that uh, um, he says that he's long and uh, then you miss something and then you go back have to add or something doesn't quite work so I multiplied by f of x uh, I'm missing now something again <laughs> yes it's God, I better keep myself quiet because I keep making mistakes. So I'll check it afterwards and then we have plus f of x bn sine n pi x and we have the integral and then we have dx. So we need to check. First of all, let's put this on in the box. So... <coughs> <laughs> what I did, I took this line here, I multiplied it by f of x and integrated it from minus l to l uh, with respect to x and put a 1 over l in front of it. Okay, so I've done that on this. So 1 over l minus l to l, f of x times a naught over 2 dx, that's fine. And then 1 over l integral minus l to l and I multiplied it the, by f of x and integrated by dx. So I put the f of x there and there. Okay, so now if we look carefully at this, first of all, I'm gonna write, first of all, what is uh, the, the definition of the a naught? So if you look at what is a naught from here, a naught is in fact this quantity here. Um, when you're putting in there n is equal to zero cos of zero is one so sometimes people write it separately the a naught because in fact it's that and if you look at carefully what we got in here is we got one over l and of course the a naught over two is independent of x we can pull it outside actually let's write that first a naught over two that's pulled outside times one over l the integral from minus l to l of f of x dx and that is by definition your a naught so that is another a naught so we will tidy this up in a second <coughs> next thing to do is to inter to interchange summation and integration okay so this is the sum so this is going to be now we're going to pull the sum on the outside, but we're going to leave for convenience from n is equal to 1 to infinity. We're going to leave the 1 over L with the integral. So first of all, the a n is independent of integration, so it's the, the b n. So we can write, first of all, the sum from that's the a n pulled outside the integral, but not outside the summand. And we got times 1 over L minus L to L. Probably I'm writing in the best possible way, but it's okay. F of X cos and pi X over L. <clears throat> and I'm going to put a bracket there. So if you look, this is just this bit here up to there. Just interchange that. Everything is there. That can come as the integral, the 1 over L with the limits f of x and cos of pi x. And the same thing, we have another integral. So I'm going to write as two separate integrals. It's actually easier. Plus bn, that's this bit pulled outside the, the summation symbol, the sigma. And we still got the 1 over l times 1 over l minus l to l. And I wish I had actually rehearsed that a little bit better because probably I could have written it a little bit easy in a, in a better fashion to, to follow. Uh, often I jump onto it and uh, uh, I'll realize after so I could have done a better job. Okay, let's have a look at this now, what we got so far. First of all, let's use a different color pen. And uh, let's look at what we've got here. And I hope the yellow does show on the 
video. Okay, what is that? 1 over L integral minus L to L f of x cosine pi x of L dx. This is, by definition, another a n. So I'm going to write it here. This is an a n. The same thing if you look at the other <coughs> integral a little bit further. This bit here. Okay, that's of course a b n. And uh, lastly, what did it say? And I did actually, I should have done it at the time. This bit here is in fact your A naught. I had it have done that in the very beginning. You can take the video back perhaps a few steps and uh, this will, uh, uh, before I rubbed it off and you would have had an A naught for that. So that in fact is equal to um, A naught over two squared only on the A naught and if you look at what we're left with now inside the sums is we've got the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity a n times another a n so that's the a n's all squared and we've got of course a b n and that's another b n and this is possible's identity this is what is actually is is, is saying is saying and perhaps we should write it with a red pen or something and uh, with much larger uh, print so it can stand out. It says if we have a Fourier series and we have, of course, the coefficient, so we got all these kind of things, then, of course, the following thing is true. The integral of 1 over L from minus L to L of f of x all squared dx is equal to a naught all squared over 2 plus the sum of the coefficients squared like the a n's for n 1 2 3 4 5 the a naught is kept separately this is actually such a simple calculation for that Okay, so this is possible identity, and it's very useful in finding some um, for summing series and a few other bits and bobs. So I hope you followed it. Uh, I will be using this particular result in subsequent lectures without obviously any proof. That's the proof of it. It's just a little bit of tedious uh, manipulation of integrals and sums and definitions. Uh, for your series, takes a little while in the beginning to get used to it but it's actually a very easy topic okay i'll be signing out and i'll see you real soon with more videos on uh, mathematics bye bye for now